going is Ladakh protesting. Now, since the past few days or months, Ladakh, which is nestled in the northernmost part of India, has been witnessing a wave of protests that has swept across its rugged terrain. The protests are led by Sonam Wangchuk, who is an Indian engineer, innovator, education reformist, known for his contribution to the sustainable development and education. The residents of Ladakh, primarily indigenous tribal communities, have voiced a vehement opposition against the central government's policies and demanded greater autonomy and protection of their rights. So, let us try to understand the reasons behind these protests. The protests are largely drawn on the cultural, political and environmental concerns that have catalyzed the ongoing unrest. The protests in Ladakh are deeply rooted in the region's recent political history. And what is that? Now, in August 2019, the Indian government revoked the special status of Article 370 of Jammu and Kashmir, of which Ladakh was a part. And then it reorganized it into two separate union territories. One is Ladakh, the second one is Jammu and Kashmir. Now, this move stripped away the legislative powers of the region and placed it directly under the central administration, which means that Ladakh will be without a Vidhan Sabha. The decision was initially met with approval by many in Ladakh. Why? Because the Ladakh had long felt marginalized under the previous administrative arrangements under Article 370, where the political leaders from Kashmir were calling the shots. And as the state was bifurcated, resulting in a separate identity to the Ladakhis, the Ladakhis were happy. However, the initial enthusiasm waned as the implications of the new governance structure became apparent. The primary demand driving the protest is for the statehood for Ladakh. Now, as a separate state, Ladakh would have its own legislative assembly and representation in the Indian parliament. Now, this would allow the people of Ladakh to elect their own representatives who can advocate for their interests at both the state level and the national levels. Also, as a separate state, Ladakh could have more control over its own governance and administration. Ladakh faces unique developmental challenges due to its geographical location and harsh climate. The region is often cut off from the rest of the country during the winter months, making infrastructure development and access to basic amenities difficult. Ladakh is believed that statehood would give them more resources and decision-making power to address these challenges and promote sustainable development in the region. Ladakh has a distinct cultural and historical identity that sets it apart from other regions in the state of Jammu and Kashmir. The people of Ladakh, primarily comprising of the Ladakhi, Buddhist and Shia Muslims, have their own language, traditions and way of life. They feel that the statehood would provide them with greater autonomy to preserve and promote their unique cultural heritage. The second demand is for including Ladakh in the sixth schedule of the Indian constitution. Now, the sixth schedule establishes autonomous district councils in the tribal areas which are responsible for local governance. Now, these councils have legislative, executive and financial powers to make laws on certain specified subjects. Now, this provision is seen as crucial for Ladakh where over 97% of the population belongs to various tribal communities. Sixth schedule is currently applicable to the states of Assam, Meghalaya, Tripura and Mizoram. Now, Ladakh's unique cultural identity and fragile ecosystem are at the heart of the protesters' concerns. The region, known for its pristine landscapes and rich Buddhist heritage, faces threats from unchecked tourism and industrial development. Now, since becoming a union territory, there have been proposals for large-scale mining and infrastructure projects which local sphere could disrupt their traditional way of life and damage the environment. The protesters argue that the sixth schedule status would provide them with the necessary legal framework to regulate these activities and safeguard their interests. Now, the Ladakhis also have another significant issue and that is the economic and job security. Now, there's a fear of demographic changes and economic marginalization of the indigenous population. The revocation of laws that previously restricted land ownership 
to natives under Article 370 now has raised concerns about an influx of outsiders who could compete for jobs and resources. So under Article 370, the outsiders could not own property, but now they could. The protesters are demanding job reservations for locals and establishment of a Ladakh Public Service Commission to ensure that employment opportunities are preserved for native residents. So these are the concerns of Ladakhis. Now what about the response from the government? Now despite multiple round of talks with the representatives from Ladakh, the central government has yet to address these demands satisfactorily. Negotiations have frequently ended in statements, with protesters feeling that their grievances are not being taken seriously. And this has led to repeated shutdowns and public demonstrations with community leaders and even local politicians from ruling parties urging the government to take decisive action. So in a nutshell, the protests in Ladakh are a manifestation of the region's desire for autonomy, cultural preservation and environmental protection. They reflect deep-seated fears of the future of Ladakh's tribal communities and their unique way of life. As the government navigates these complex issues, the resolution to this protest will require a careful balancing of national administrative priorities with the genuine concerns of the Ladakhi people. The ongoing situation underscores emphasizes the challenges faced in integrating diverse regions into a national framework while respecting their local aspirations and rights. For more such interesting updates, stay tuned to Narayana.